All right, good morning, future Ravens. Welcome to our webinar for international students. Uh, we are so excited that you are considering or have chosen Carleton University. Uh, my name is Calvin Brooks. I'm an international admissions and recruitment officer here at the university. Uh, and today I'm here to talk to you about a few things before we get started with our international student services presentation. Uh, first, I'd just like to address the situation. Uh, COVID-19 has affected a lot of us. Um, I understand it's changed a lot of the uh, end of school year for all of you students, and it's also changed a lot of things around the university for us. However, uh, rest assured that operations are still running smoothly uh, at the university and in my department of admissions as well. Um, for applicants, documents are still being accepted. And if you've had any issues, you can contact us directly at international at carlton.ca. We're also hosting live chats Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you can find that on our international page as well. Um, offers of admissions are still being granted and we will continue to accept documents uh, and make offers throughout the coming weeks. For those of you that currently hold an offer of admission to Carleton University, congratulations. Um, in, terms of, in terms of some next steps I would like to highlight, please note that the deadline for residence deposits is quickly approaching. It is June 8th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know there are probably a lot of questions about residence and please check out our recent webinar we did this past Tuesday with our residence and housing office. You can find that on our See You at Home page. Any questions can also be forwarded to them via email at accommodations at carlton.ca. Uh, other next steps include registration. You should have received an email regarding your registration dates. They begin on June 24th. Um, Please, please, please check out the links included in the email and read the registration page thoroughly as it outlines in great detail the registration process and what you have to do in order to ensure you are properly registered. Now, um, understand that this fall term being online and that this uh, this new territory um, is new under these conditions for Carleton University, but it's certainly a territory that Carleton is familiar with. We are very familiar with distance learning. Uh, it is something that we've offered now for decades. Um, a few years back, uh, we used to offer uh, cable news or cable TV channels uh, where our lectures were delivered. We also used to mail out tapes of lectures to students as well. Obviously, a lot has changed since then, but we are very familiar with the online learning process. Our faculty and instructors are very busy right now redesigning course delivery uh, and exploring how new technologies and various tools can be used to create a better online learning environment for you. We are also in the middle of our summer term. Uh, this summer term is also fully online and we saw a record number of students register for courses and we hope that continues throughout the fall as well. Uh, and despite this situation, one thing I really want you to understand is that the entire university, every office we have, is working hard to ensure that your transition to Carleton University is as smooth as possible. Uh, one of those offices is joining us today. It is the International Student Services Office, or ISSO. This is both an office and an acronym that you will become very familiar with throughout your time here at Carleton University. And today we have several representatives here to talk to you about the services they provide and how they can enhance your experience as a student once your time begins at Carleton University. So at this time, I'd like to hand things over to my colleague Neve to get things started. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much, Kelvin, for that introduction. Thank you so much for joining us this morning as we discuss the supports available to you through Carleton University's International Student Services Office. My name is Neve O'Shea, and I am the Intercultural Programs Coordinator in our office, which means I get to plan many of the exciting events and programs that we have on offer for you to prepare you for success at Carleton. I'm joined this morning by a number of my colleagues who will introduce themselves throughout this session. So I just want to start by saying congratulations on your offer to Carleton University. We are so excited that you want to join our community of Ravens in the fall. We know that this fall term is going to look quite different uh, than what you might expect, but as Calvin mentioned, Carlton is committed to ensuring that you can thrive academically and socially during this unique time and throughout your entire academic journey. And 
as has been mentioned, we encourage you to ask lots of questions during your time with us today, um, and we will be happy to kind of share our insights and perspectives to help you prepare for this, for this journey. So the International Student Services Office, or as Kelvin mentioned, the ISSO, as we call it here on campus, is the place where the international community comes together at Carleton. We focus on supporting the international experiences of undergraduate, graduate, study abroad, and exchange students. Our professional staff have expertise in student and immigration advising, health insurance, international education, and transition support. We also have a wonderful team of student staff and volunteers that you'll have the chance to get to know through our orientation events and the various activities that we host throughout the year. This slide provides an overview of the services that will help support your transition and experiences in Canada. We'll be covering a few of these in more detail later on in our presentation, but when we are all back on campus, we would encourage you to come visit us in the ISSO to get to know our staff and to take full advantage of all the resources that we have available. In addition to the services we have listed here, we have computers for use, ice skates for you to borrow to go skating on the canal, and a lounge space where students study or can connect with others. Uh, so please stop by if you ever need a comfortable space on campus. Now to prepare you for your time at Carleton, we are working hard to offer a number of different supports specific to international students. And to tell you about them, here is my colleague Karishma. Thanks, Neve. Hi everyone, my name is Karishma and I'm a graduate student who works in the ISSO. I'm originally from Bangladesh and I'm completing my master's in philosophy. So, to prepare you for this fall, the ISSO offers pre-departure and arrival checklists with tasks you should be looking to complete well before you arrive on campus, as well as activities that will help make your first few weeks of classes easier. We will also be hosting another webinar with international admissions in July, so you can ask more questions and make sure you're on the right track. iStart is our international student orientation program. This year, we will offer it online to accommodate students who will be studying in their home countries, as well as arriving in Canada. We cover topics like getting to know Ottawa, preparing for Canadian academic culture, important tips for maintaining student status, and much, much more. We will also partner with various offices so you get to know other international students and Canadian campus life. We also offer peer mentorship. We have upper year students who are available via email, online meetings, and in person to help you navigate campus involvement, adjust to Canadian life, navigate unique circumstances like homesickness, making friends from different cultures, and finding your favorite foods from home here in Canada. Next slide. We also offer many social and cultural events throughout the year to introduce you to Canadian culture and to celebrate your culture with others. We do all sorts of fun events like cooking classes with chefs on campus, group ice skating on the world's longest man-made outdoor skating rink, visiting a maple sugar shack, museum outings, and a weekly Canadian tea time social event, just to name a few. Some of our most popular events include trying snowshoeing, which is, a, which is a traditional indigenous form of transportation on snow and other fun winter activities in one of our national parks. It also includes Hockey 101, which is a program where you will learn all about Canada's national pastime, watch a game live, and even get a chance to get on the ice. Thank you so much, Karishma. The ISSO and Carleton more generally is committed to your success both inside and outside the classroom. We offer a range of workshops to help you get the specific information you will need on a variety of topics, such as immigration topics, like study permit information, working as a student in Canada, and pathways to permanent residency, as well as more detailed information about your health coverage, we also coordinate clinics where you can obtain a social insurance number, which is a document you will need to work in Canada. International students are recognized as important members of the Carlson community with unique needs. 
As a result, a number of our partners on campus offer programs specifically for international student success. The Student Experience Office offers a six week peer mentorship program called the First Year Connections Program, where first year students are matched with a current Carleton student to get advice and support during the first six weeks of their transition. There is an option to be paired with an international student who has already successfully completed their first year, if that's a preference of yours. Career Services offers a five week workshop series specifically for students who are new to entering the Canadian job market. And we also partner with the awards office to offer financial literacy support for international students. You can find out about these and so many other initiatives through our website or our student newsletter. The main takeaway we hope you remember from this webinar is that the ISSO is a place for you to feel connected and to access supports during your time at Carleton. Our staff, both professional and student staff, will be available to help you uh, and to support your transition and growth here at Carleton. There's no small or silly questions. Let us be here to help you as you prepare for a new academic, social, and cultural journey. I did wanna highlight that you can learn more about us by visiting our website, carlton.ca slash ISSO. And in light of COVID, we are answering all inquiries via email. So please email ISSO at carlton.ca with any questions that may come up for you after today's session. We're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. And next up will be my colleague, Lynn. Good morning, everybody. My name is Lynn Murphy, and I am the ISSO Office Administrator, and I am also the Administrator of the University Health Insurance Plan, which is called UHIP. Next slide, please. So UHIP is medical health insurance to protect you as an international student if you get sick or hurt, and if you have to go to the doctor or hospital. As an Ontario resident, I have what's called OHIP, which means Ontario Health Insurance. UHIP health coverage is the most comparable coverage that's available to you as an international student. When you register for classes, you will see a UHIP charge that automatically gets charged to your student account. Towards the start of the academic year, you will get more information on UHIP and you'll get a UHIP medical health card sent to your Carleton email address. So basically, UHIP is in place if you have to go to the doctor, if you have to go to the hospital, if you get hurt, if you get sick, and all those details are on our website as well. If you are a, um, an international student but have Canadian citizenship and have been living overseas, because you're paying domestic tuition fees, the UHIP charge is not going to be automatically added to your student account. And if you fall into this category, you'll have to contact the ISSO and we'll do a manual um, uh, enrollment for you to make sure that you're protected. The thing about medical health insurance is that you may use it, you may not. But if you don't have it um, and you don't have medical health insurance, you are responsible for paying the bill, which can be very, very expensive. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned here, um, the when you're registering for classes, the UHIP charge will automatically go on your account. I don't have the fees yet for the upcoming academic year starting in September. Those will be um, available shortly, hopefully within the next week or so. But it's based on, as I said, terms of registration. And there is a supplemental insurance plan, which is a, a separate insurance plan that covers medical aspects that UHIP does not cover. So. The supplemental insurance has a drug component, prescription drug component, a dental component, and a vision component. UHIP doesn't cover any of those things. So there are two other student-run organizations um, at Carleton. One is called CUSA, which is the Carleton University Students Association for undergraduate students. And then the GSA is the Graduate Students Association, and they offer the supplemental plan for graduate students. The thing, about, the thing that's different about the supplemental plan is that if you're starting in fall with the supplemental plan, it all automatically goes in your student account. If you're going to defer that say to January, 
your UHIP charge will be automatic, but the supplemental plan is not. So you will have to go and see one of those offices to enroll in that plan. Um, Neve already mentioned what our website is, so there's more UHIP details on there. If you have any other questions around the UHIP plan, please feel free to email us and be happy to answer any of your questions. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Good morning. I'm Carolyn. I'm one of the immigration advisors at the ISSO. My colleague Sarah is with us as well. We're both going to answer your questions. For now, you may be thinking or wondering about uh, getting a study permit. So I'm going to talk a bit about that first. So once you've been, uh, once you've received an offer of admission from Carleton, well, you should take a minute to celebrate that. If you already have it, congratulations. Then as an international student, you have to make a second application. This one will be for your study permit. It's going to go to the visa office in your country the, for Canada, and uh, you're going to apply for a study permit. This is the document that allows you to be in Canada and study at a designated learning institution such as Carleton University. You'll need another immigration document for Canada. This will allow you to travel to Canada. This is, will either be a temporary resident visa, TRV. That's a sticker that's actually laminated into your passport. Or you might need an electronic travel authorization, which is less formal. It's a, a number basically that you get sent in an email. Which one you need depends on your country of nationality. You don't have to worry about that. The application for this document is automatically included with your study permit application. Canada doesn't use the term uh, student visa or study visa as such. There are two separate documents, the permit and the, and the entry document. Once you accept your offer of admission from Carleton, you will receive a, a file called a visa letter. And when you open it up, it's called student information for a study permit. This is Carlton's version of a letter of acceptance. And once you have this, you're ready to start your study permit application. It may take you a while to gather other, the, the other documents you need and processing times are a bit slower this year, but you should get started on it. The way to apply uh, must be online. Again, due to COVID-19, there are special measures in place this summer. You must apply online at Canada.ca. You just navigate through to the immigration area and the sign in to start an application. The way the system works is you start by answering an eligibility questionnaire. You just answer questions about yourself and your answers tell the system which forms and, app and uh, documents you need to provide as part of your application and all of your documents you're going to scan or photograph and upload. So all study permit applications have one main application form, IMM1294. You need your Carleton offer, the student information for a study permit. You need a passport. Ideally, it should be valid for your period of study, but not necessarily. You can get an extension later if you need it. Uh, you need to prove you have the financial means to study. This should be for at least one year, so you should have money available to pay for your tuition, which appears in your offer, and your estimated living expenses for 12 months. If you really have no idea of what you might, you might pay for rent and food, then a, an accepted estimate is $10,000 Canadian. Many students provide a letter of support from their parents and their parents' bank statements, but various types of documents are acceptable. Uh, they, the officer wants to see that you have enough money, that it's uh, available, not tied up in investments, for example, that it's allocated to your study, and they usually uh, are want to see some indication of the source of the money, where, whether it's from business or employment. And you also need a passport photo, which will be digital in this case. Depending on uh, which visa office you're applying to, 
there may be additional requirements. There may be uh, additional short forms to fill out. Um, perhaps you need a police certificate. You may need to get a medical exam. A few visa offices, but not most of them, ask for prepayment of tuition. Some ask for a study plan or statement of purpose. Even if the visa office doesn't require this, I recommend that you do that every student provide one with a study permit application. This is your explanation of your educational goals and why studying at Carleton University will help you to meet those goals. Here are some points, here's a list of points that you should cover in a study plan, some questions you should answer. I'm not going to read them now. You will have access to this uh, later. Uh, for now, I just want to emphasize that it should be you who writes your study plan, even if you have someone else helping you with the application. This is your statement. Next slide. Okay. This summer, we're in a very special situation and uh, IRCC, Immigration Canada, the visa offices have special measures in place. In general, uh, usually I would say make sure your application is complete, but we understand that this year you may not be able to get some required documents. Do your best, but if you really cannot, don't delay your application on for that reason. Uh, if you cannot supply a document, instead upload an explanation of why you cannot and submit anyway. The visa offices won't refuse your application for being incomplete. They'll give you time, they will send you reminders, and your application will remain open while you work on it. And this includes uh, getting your biometrics, which you get the instructions after you submit. You may not be able to do that right away. And if you need a medical, you may not be able to do that right away. But get started and work on it. Be patient, it's going to be slow. Uh, if you decide that you'd like to start your studies with before you come to Canada, you don't need a study permit or study permit approval for that. So that might be a choice that you might pick. Next slide. Uh, if you decide that doing a study permit application is a lot of work, you may consider hiring an agent or a representative. You don't need one, but they can certainly uh, provide some expertise and some help making you a complete and Make, making a complete and correct application. They have that expertise, but you'll still have some work. You'll have to provide all the information, uh, the correct information. You'll have to write a study plan. If you do hire an agent, you should be, uh, you should know that the Government of Canada only wants to deal with authorized representatives and a person who is an authorized representative should be able to prove that to you and they will always ask you to sign a a representative form to include as part of your application. So you will submit at some point you'll be approved for the study permit. If you're from a visa required country, the visa office will call for your passport. They'll insert the visa and that means you can travel to Canada. When you travel to Canada, you should have your your passport and visa or ETA your study permit approval letter, which they call a letter of introduction, and your Carleton information, your offer from Carleton. You should have these handy in your check-on luggage. You show them to the border services officer at the airport with, when you enter Canada, and they will examine all of those documents one more time, and they will print out your study permit for you there. So everything I've talked about, uh, you can find on our website and you know how to reach us if you have any questions. So, uh, and we're well available to answer your questions today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Uh, so now that you have learned about the services provided through our office, we wanted to share with you about some of the additional resources available to you throughout campus. So on this next slide, we have some key resources that you can access if you have questions as you prepare for your time on campus. This is certainly not an exhaustive list, but it's important to know that there are many resources available on campus to help you succeed here in Canada. We have offices dedicated to helping you with academic advising, learning new academic skills, 
finding jobs, getting involved in campus life like student clubs and athletics. We have help and counseling here on campus as well as supports with finding off campus housing and getting academic accommodations related to disability, pregnancy and religion. All of these offices have moved to offering support services online for you to access until we are back on campus again. And now for just a broader list of Carleton resources, we would encourage you to visit students.carleton.ca, uh, which has uh, important dates, upcoming events, and resources related to our five pillars of student uh, success, academics, finances, employability, campus life, and wellness. So we are wrapping up our our formal presentation component of the webinar. We want to thank you so much for joining us. We will be available and answering questions via the chat up until about 10 o'clock a.m. So for another half hour or so. So please ask us your questions. We are here to help and we really thank you for joining us and, and hope we will see you in the fall. Uh, so again, if you need to get in touch, uh, please connect with ISSO at carleton.ca for international student questions in particular uh, about your time here on campus or with admissions through international at carleton.ca. Um, thank you again and we hope we hope we'll see you in the fall. <laughs>